Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of Star Versus. Today I'm going to start off with introducing you to a new member of the household. His name is Mr. Fluffenstein. Say hello Mr. Fluffenstein. He is my super cute little new baby. We just adopted him this week. He is so sweet and he has checked out clean of all problems and parasites. I took him to the vet and he is happy, happy, and healthy, healthy, which is awesome. But if you happen to hear jingling going on in the background while I'm filming this, it's because of him. Today, I'm going to start a new segment, which I'm going to lovingly call Pale Girl Problems. So we're going to go over what it's like to have really super pigmentally challenged skin like mine, how you can overcome certain makeup obstacles like contour without looking like a zebra or foundation without looking like a Cheeto. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's episode, I'm gonna be going over how I contour because all the contour palettes out there right now currently are worlds too dark for my skin. I've tried just about everything. I bought a contour palette that is a super pale one, it's RK by Kiss, um, which is for the super pale, fair skinned, and I even bought the powder because I know with cream it tends to lay on too heavy on my skin, and it just makes stripes and smears, it doesn't look good. Um, but I did try this palette, it is a nice palette, it's just that the shades don't complement my skin tone, they're too dark for me for the most part, and it just, it's not really for me which is fine, but I did find a way around it, and we're gonna go over that today. So, as you can see, I've laid out the groundwork. I put on a foundation. I always, always, always use the NYX Total Control in the shade Porcelain. And this is what it looks like. I mean, you can see it matches my skin just perfectly. My hands, my face, my chest, everything pretty much is the same color. And if you were curious enough to watch my Harley Quinn tutorial, that was also an NYX Total Control shade. That one was in pale, which is like super duper bright white. Even for me, that was just really pale. That's why I love the NYX, not sponsored by the way, just really love their product. NYX Total Control, like they have shades from everywhere from like ghost white to super dark and everywhere in between and all the different shades and all the different undertones. It's really awesome. You can put on super light the way that I do where it's just kind of like there, just barely correcting. Or you can layer it on and go for a more full coverage foundation which is perfectly fine. This one is a bit liquidy and you do want to set it with a translucent powder um, because if you have really pale skin and you put on a colored powder, it's gonna change the tone of your makeup and make you look orangey or darker or too pink. So if you find a shade that works perfectly on your skin, try not to muck it up by putting a colored powder. Just use, use something like the, what do I use? I use the Elf Perfect Finish HD Powder is translucent. There's no color payoff on this at all. It's just sheer. So, like I said, I went ahead and I did my foundation. Um, I did my eyebrows and mascara and all that pooty poo. If you're curious about what colors I used or what products I used, I will go ahead and link those down below. Let's get started with our contour. So what I use for myself is I use NYX, I know, I know, I use a lot of NYX, and this one is supposed to be a high definition blush, but it's a brown blush. It is the high definition blush in taupe. And this is what it looks like. I don't know why you would ever use brown for blush, but I mean, you know what? It's, it's not my world, I'm just living in it. So how I do it, is instead of rubbing on there because that would be way too much powder, way too much color, what I do is I just press my brush into it. If I feel like I've gotten too much, then I will go ahead and like tap or blow. Um, the type of brush I use, I always use Eco Tools because they're cruelty free, they're vegan, and their handles are made of bamboo, which means that it's responsibly sourced. Uh, this particular brush is the Complexion Blending Brush, 
which probably isn't for doing contour. I have a different, everybody has a different shaped face, so sometimes different brushes will work differently for different people. I have a more round structure, so an angled brush just kind of doesn't work for getting into the hollows and for blending for me. So, like I said, I just press, tap, and then we go into that hollow. And you always want to go up to the hairline or it looks weird and suspended and lost. And then you make sure to blend it out. So that doesn't look too bad. I mean, like this is without anything and this is with, which seems to have a pretty good color to me. This is what I use every single time that I do contour. So again, press and just rub it into where you need it. You ever notice one side always looks better than the other? Or is that just me? I don't know. So next, again, every single time you're just pressing, you're not rubbing. And we're gonna do our jawline. And you wanna blend down your neck a bit because you don't want a harsh line. You don't wanna look like a clown or a zebra. You just wanna have a little bit of definition and that's not a bad thing. Next, to get into smaller areas, what I use is the Eco Tools uh, Large Shadow Brush. And this is what that looks like. It's got a lot of good uses because it is angled, it is fluffy, you can get into everywhere you need to get, but it's also got that sharp edge. And I do a press, press against both angles, low, and I go in along the edge of my nose. I don't go all the way up. I kind of, everybody's nose is shaped different though. So I mean like how I do my contour on my nose is gonna be different than how you might need to. So don't listen to me on that note. Just um, the technique I'm using. Put a little bit underneath. And then I also do just a little bit across. Now, of course, we're not going to leave it like that. That would be ridiculous. So what I do is I use a fluffy brush that, gosh, this is a foundation brush, but it's super puffy and it is a synthetic brush. It's a really soft one. It's like that teddy bear fur type stuff. I honestly, the label wore off. I don't even know what brand this is, but I just use it to smooth out my contour edges so that it looks more natural. Lastly, I take that same brush, I pressed it, and I just run it under the lower lip. And what that does is creates a shadow under the lip, which creates a fuller look on the underneath part. The next step that I normally do is my blush because you don't want to just have brown and then nothing. It looks weird. What I use is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Blush Trio in Pink Passion. This is the color range that I deal with. And I normally go for the brownish pink right here because it kind of blends really well with the contour. So what I do again is I just press it and let go, blow, and blend it right next to the contour shade on the apple of the cheek and blend all the way up. We don't want to go too far in because you want to keep this area highlighted. Oh, Mr. Fluffenstein, I hear you. I know you want attention. And that kind of blends the two shades together. So what I do for my brush cleaning in between applications, if I'm going to be sitting down and doing one face of makeup but using the same brush multiple times without wetting it and waiting for it to dry, because who has that kind of time? I don't. I use one of these. This is the Blank Slate Brush Color Swap Pad. So all you have to do really is just rub it on there. There's a little rough sponge and it takes all the color off of your brushes. You can do it with any brush that you're using powder. And then later you would wash this. Of course you also wash your brushes. I mean, yeah, it's gonna take the color off. It does not take the bacteria off. I would always, always, always recommend washing your brushes in between makeup applications but this is just to, you know, to change the colors. The next step, you want to highlight. Obviously, if you're contouring, you want to highlight as well. I still use the Love You So Mochi in their light palette. Also NYX. No, not sponsored, but gee, I wish I were. NYX, please sponsor me. I'd be awesome at it. This is the Arcade Glam, and it's the, high, it's the lightest highlighter that I have personally been able to find that doesn't look too over the top. It has three different shades. 
So if you're wearing like a different color eyeshadow and you want to complement it, or if you're wearing a brightly colored shirt and you wanted to go a little bit more pinky, you have your options here. What I normally do personally is I use a bit of the silvery white and I mix it with a bit of the gold. Just go over your areas that you normally would, like your brow bone, your cheekbone, like so. That's pretty awesome. And then of course duplicate on the other side. This brush that I'm using is the same one that I used for my contour color. It's again the Eco Tools Complexion Blending Brush. It's a little shorty one. It came with a bunch of other ones, which I, I love a, a nice pack of color. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead again with the same one that I used for my nose contour and my under lip contour. And that again is the Eco Tools Large Shadow Brush with the angles on it. I'm gonna use the same blend of colors with the highlighter, you don't have to tap and press. You can, you can grab as much as you want because it's super bright and so am I. <laughs> I just kind of go over the edge of my nose and then a bit on the bridge. Looks pretty good, I think. And then again, I use a bit on the cupid's bow, a little bit on the chin, and sometimes I do a little bit on the forehead. I mean, if I have my bangs cut super short like I do today, then yeah, might as well. You can, of course, always highlight in the corners of your eye if you are so inclined. And today, why not? I am. And what I used for the corners was the Eco Tools Liner Smudge Brush, which I know is for underneath, but rules were made to be broken at me. I don't care. <laughs> so that is the finished look. This is how I personally contour. Everybody has their own way of doing it. I mean, you can also put highlighter on your collarbone. I mean, it's up to you. Whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you feel beautiful, that's what you should do for you. Don't ever do something just because somebody else says you should. I mean, it's makeup. At the end of the day, if it doesn't look the same way that you want it to or the way that you imagined, you can just wash it off and start over. It's not a big deal. Well, I mean, unless you're in a hurry. Maybe it's a little bit of a big deal. In which case, don't try a new makeup look on a date where you have time constraints because you might have to rework it. So that's all I have for you today. I think our look turned out pretty good. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe, and ring my bell. And I will look forward to having you watch my next one. I have a feeling it's probably going to be something that I meant to review this past year, but I didn't get to. Please feel free to subscribe to my Instagram. I will have that linked also down below along with all the products that I use today and their colors. Please be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and be good to the planet. Bye.